Hello everyone, my name is Josh, and today we're going to be talking about trigonometric functions. Specifically, we're going to be talking about a transformation of trigonometric functions called a vertical dilation or a vertical stretch. But without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so what I have here for you guys is I went ahead and went to Desmos, and I graphed sine of x. You can see here, it's the red graph here. And I want you to pay attention over here on the left hand side to the table of the input and output values. So you can see if I input 0 into sine of x, sine of x is going to get me a 0 out. If I put in pi over 6, sine of x is going to give me 0 0.5, and so on and so forth. Now I went ahead and I made another graph called a sine of x, and a is a slider here. You can see a equals 1 right now. And if we compare the values, so if we look at and compare the tables, we can see these tables are identical. So a being 1 is really just the same as sine of x, that there's no difference to the graph. And if I show it, you can see it overlaps exactly. You see? So on the graph you can see the blue is overlapping the red. Now, what happens if we change this a value, right? What if instead of a being 1, what if we changed it to a being 2? You know, look what happens to the graph, you see? And let's, in order to understand what happens to the graph, let's look at what happens on the table. So again, it's multiplying by 2. So you can see 0 is still 0. Uh, but pi over 6 before was 0 0.5, but we're multiplying by 2 now. So we have got a 1, and pi over 3 we had 0 0.866, that's an approximation. Now we have 1.73, which is roughly double, again another approximation. For pi over 2 we had 1, now we have 2. So it affected all of those y values for these points by making them double of what we originally started with. Now if I change this to 3, you can see that everything is triple, so 0 0.5 becomes 1.5, 1 becomes 3, and so on. And when you go through and do these smoothly, so you go through all the values, you can see what's going to happen. Uh, let's see if I can just mess with these. You see it causes this stretch to happen. Right? What's happening is at any given value, you can stop and it's going to multiply the distance away from the midline that, by that number. So in this case, I'm multiplying the original distance, whatever that is, for that given point, and I'm multiplying it by 7.1. So at the highest point of sine, that's 1. Well, if I stuck a 7 in there, all of a sudden that makes it so that the output becomes 7. And if I use a negative number, it flips the graph over. It does a reflection as well as a dilation. Okay, so I recommend that you go ahead and you play with this and you mess around with this. Maybe put in some different values in here. Put in all the way up to 2 pi. Um, I only went up to uh, pi basically. I have a 2 pi here, but this could basically just be pi. And you play around with it, right? You mess with it. And that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. Um, now, I, my original plan was to show you kind of more detail, working it step by step and seeing each individual um, point show how it moves and how it stretches and how that affects the entire graph. I even have this whole little thing there, right? You can screenshot that or whatever. You can see what exactly is happening. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in me doing something more like that, uh, I'll have to get a different rig for my camera and stuff. But in any case, um, if you could comment your questions, comment what you liked or didn't like about the video. Uh, if it was helpful to you, please like it and subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day.